Hey, it's your professional sarcastic man and secret of attention, Oz Chris, here with some team reviews. The, the theme is teams with these comics. Uh, comics featuring uh, superhero teams, teammates, etc. So we have Go Go Power Rangers number 15, uh, Justice League Dark number 6, The Black Order number 2, and Uncanny X-Men number 5. So we'll start off, we'll go go with Go Go Power Rangers. That was terrible, I'll stop that. <laughs> so, Go Go Power Rangers number 15. It finally happens. Trini and Jason admit their love for one another. Problem is, as I've always said, they're not a couple in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, you know, in the comic or even in the TV series, but I'm mainly talking about the comic, so it's not going to last. <laughs> but it has worked naturally. They've built it up naturally. It wasn't forced, like... Pretty much from the start of the series, this has been built up. Slowly and slowly, them hanging out more than usual, uh, whatever, yada, yada, yada. But apparently also with this power swap, they could, they're also now uh, able to read kind of each other's thoughts and memories as uh, as uh, Jason finds out. Uh, he learns, uh, you know, Jason f discovers by reading her thoughts that... Uh, Wait, you're in love with me, and Trini, uh, Trini doesn't want to admit it, and she just, uh, uh, she's very hesitant in being in a relationship with Jason, as, as she states, I've lived on eight military bases in 15 years, my dad would be, would get stationed here, and then, uh, here and there, just long enough for me to make a friend, and then goodbye, so the idea of doing that with someone who is more than a friend, and uh, Jason says, but these feelings, they don't, do what I uh, do, what I do. push them down, trust me. Uh, she doesn't want to get in a relationship. But speaking of other relationships, uh, Kim and Skull go on a date. Yes, Skull from the uh, ever-lovable, stereotypical bully uh, duo, Bulk and Skull, is on a date with Kimberly Hart, of all people. Uh, but they, they do have a fun, uh, nice time, and meantime... Meanwhile, there's like, there's, there's like four things going on in this book. So you have the whole Jason and Trini uh, pretty much revealing their feelings for one another. You have the whole Kimberly uh, trying to get over Matt and she accepts a date with Skull. You have Rita looking for a powerful weapon to use against the Power Rangers. And then you have um, uh, her, uh, her servants... Uh, Seems like they want to stage a revolt, uh, rebel against her. So, you know, Kimberly's having fun and all with her date, but Skull doesn't accept the kiss, despite the fact it's, uh, he's, he's OTP'd them, you know, one true pairing himself and, uh, Kimberly in his dreams, but, uh, he knows that Kimberly is not over Matt, uh, very clear. And finally, finally, after all this build-up, uh, finally, the two kiss, uh, almost similar to the cover, but uh, the two finally get together. I'm happy for them, despite the fact we know it's not going to work. So, And I'm going to end it there, but um, uh, first off, I'll say, uh, this another good issue. Definitely been enjoying Go Go Power Rangers. Uh, it's that and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers have been... Amazing, always it, after Shadow Grid, they've still been going strong, almost even better. Uh, uh, but the end of this, the end of uh, the power that Rita discovers, uh, Rita f finds, uh, it uh, very much shows that Go Go Power Rangers has almost reached the start of where Mighty Morphin Power Rangers started with the comic, which is after the events of. Uh, green with evil where tommy is tommy becomes the green ranger uh he's turned if he's evil fights them then he's uh freed saved becomes one of the power rangers that's where mighty morphin power rangers starts off after dealing with the aftermath of green with evil and the ending of this shows that it's almost approaching green with evil so apparently uh, from what i've heard uh uh, one of the friends on Twitter, Spider Side, who also 
has been reading both of these, uh, Gogo and Marty Morphin. Uh, they're apparently going to time jump to introduce Zed, which I'm, you know, Zed has appeared in like an annual, so I'd assume they'd probably time jump because there'd be no point of kind of, like I said, they've almost, they are almost at the start of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So I'm assuming they're going to time jump because the main, t uh, the main comic still has the, the mismatched team from different uh, Ranger teams. So we'll see how that goes. So definitely another good issue. Justice League Dark number six. By Blue Devil's Axe, Detective Chimp must die. No, he doesn't. <laughs> so, team have arrived in Mira, and they discover why Blue Devil and pretty much everyone in Mira hates Bobo, hates Detective Chimp, as um, he did take on like the responsibility. He tried to take on the responsibilities of the Nightmaster, but. Uh, it was too much of a strain to him. So what he tried to do, which resulted in what's happening with Mira, with all these uh, undead and skeletons rising up and attacking the people, is that he tried to resurrect the original Nightmaster, Jim Rook. You know, his friend is like, is it, it got too much to him, so he tried to resurrect him. Instead, uh, broke the laws of death in that world because magic doesn't work as it does on Earth. So he broke the rules of death so that now the dead rise and are attacking people. Hence why the people hate him as he's been neglecting his job as the Nightmaster and pretty much almost doomed the entire world. And, uh, and he realizes this and he, he asks for like one, one final chance to fix what he's done wrong. And it... It works, it's done very well. And then the second half of the story is dealing with uh, Nabu, Dr. Fate, going rogue. And now the Phantom Stranger has entered the fray. You know, two of the most powerful magical beings in the universe who have, uh, as a, I think it was either Constantine or Swamp Thing has uh, states in this book, two magical beings that have always worked alongside each other, that have never fought each other, are now fighting each other. And it is a very good epic moment, and that leads into the next storyline. So, so the, this whole Mirror Nightmaster thing is kind of resolved within these two issues to set up the next one with the other kind is returning. Dr. Fate has opened the doors to Olympus where the other kind are. So, every, everything comes down to this. Everything that Justice League Dark started with comes down to this. So this was a, definitely another good issue. I've been loving Justice League Dark. The art in this is have always been amazing. Love this art. Like love this cover. I also got the variant for it as well. The variant is that's a beautiful looking variant. So another good issue of Justice League Dark. Now onto the Marvel portions of this team book. So the Black Order number two. So this was definitely another good issue as well. Although, uh, my one kind of, uh, complaint with it is that while I like the art, I, the art in the first issue was definitely much better. Uh, I think the art they're using now is more reminiscent of how, of when they show like the scenes with, uh, King Attigan. Uh, if you've seen my uh, review on the first issue, it, uh, it did seem like the art was slightly different when it, when it goes to, a. Uh, King Attican and his scene, so it does seem like this is the same with the old art here because it takes place. The majority of this takes place all in the one world. You no, know, the Black Order arrive to attack uh, the king and his forces, but they end up getting captured, and they meet members of the rebellion, who are freed by more members of the rebellion, and decide to join them for their own reasons. They're not there for the good fight. They as most of the Black Order say they don't care that there's a, there's a resistance. They're just being given a job to do and they're going to do it. But what they learn from what the resistance is looking for, they plan to use for their own reasons. to, Because uh, they're there for themselves, of course. Like, who, like why, does that, why does anyone else matter? So definitely, definitely another... Good issue. Uh, Proxima Midnight takes uh, more of a 
more of a focus here. She kind of, uh, kind of, uh, she slightly questions, uh, what she's doing. Not, not, not really slightly questioning as she's pondering the, the whole point of their involvement with this. Yes, they've been told what to do, but they're the Black Order. The only person they really, they should only really be giving, getting orders from is Thanos. And with Thanos gone, who, there's no one there to give them orders, but they're now taking orders from the Grand Master. Like, she's questioning, do they really think they're going to be free after they do this job? It's the Grand Master. He has a, it's obviously there's more intentions to it. So I definitely like that part of the book as well. So another good issue, art was slightly, uh, the art was still good, that's the thing, but issue number one had, uh, I think, was much better, and like a lot of the scenes with the Black Order, but regardless, another good issue. So on to Uncanny X-Men, Men, Men, sorry, X-Men, uh, part five of uh, Disassembled, and... I'm calling it here. They're really trying to drag it, drag out this story. Now, by this issue, like the story should be slightly starting to wrap up, but it's not. So the X Men and uh, Nate Jesus Gray's uh, horsemen uh, are attacking one another. Specifically, uh, so Jubilee, Nightcrawler, Polaris, Storm, and Psylocke are attacking. Uh, Magneto and Angel, while the rest of the team kind of uh, deal with uh, the after effects of dealing with um, Omega Red and Blob, creating this new kind of like paradise, uh, uh, kind of a uh, island, and then you just have the stuff dealing with the uh, uh, Legion, uh, Multiple Man, and all the younger X Men. Like I saw an article that was just like a. Uh, it's like, X-Men are heading into another civil war, you know. The kids want to do this, the adults want to do that. And it's just like, this is really not touched upon at all. It's just, they just do their own plan with uh, with Legion and uh, Multiple Man and Cerebro. Uh, whatever. So it's just huge clickbait. It really didn't matter. Nothing of that is touched upon. And really, this is kind of a meh issue is filler at best, and, uh, okay, I'm gonna spoil the end, uh, they try to do this whole, oh no, the lovers are, the lovers are fighting against one another, how, like, it also, honestly doesn't matter, Psylocke attacks him, and it reawakens Archangel, but the thing is, uh, I don't, I haven't been keeping up with whatever modern day Angel is, um, to what titles he's in. I don't, I don't believe he's still in Astonishing X-Men as a, it was a completely new lineup uh, after Soul's run with uh, Rosenberg's run. But uh, with Archangel, if, if you've read uh, at least Soul's Astonishing X-Men run, with Archangel, uh, uh, Professor X, or just X, like uh, uh, Charles Xavier having taken over Phantom X's body, uh, and just calling himself X, he pretty much, uh, slightly cures Archangel, so he isn't, like, a berserk killing machine, uh, Warren now has control, and can, but still stay as Archangel, so, I'm not sure if there was something else that happened afterwards that f turned him back, like, just undid what X did, uh, to him, so now, like, Archangel has gone back to what Archangel used to be. But, like, if there isn't, it's kind of just blatant disregard of continuity with with Angel and Archangel. It's, it's very clear from this and what he says, it's supposed to be, like, out of control Archangel. Original Archangel. So, I don't know. This was uh, really meh. <laughs> Uncanny x meh. Uh, it does, yeah, it very much feels like they're drawing this out because this is supposed to be a 10 part story. And honestly, this should, should have just been only six issues. Uh, I'm, I'm betting the rest are going to be just, uh, until the end, it's going to be like filler. The cover, the cover here is not, there's nothing really on this cover that says, buy me, you have to read this. It's not particularly an interesting cover. So, uh, 
not a particularly good in, good issue of Uncanny X-Men. So that was it for these team books. Uh, three good ones and one met. So that is all. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.